California. He is a member of the House Oversight Committee. He's also a member of the Budget Committee. And Democratic Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy of Illinois. He is a member of the House Oversight Committee and the House Intelligence Committee. Uh, and Congressman Krishnamurthy is a, is a member of both of these investigative committees. They, they are both conducting separate investigations that are basically targeting the conduct of President Trump. As, as you're in the middle of those investigations, uh, did it surprise you that Nancy Pelosi went public with what I know she's been telling you for a very long time, which she personally, at least, does not want impeachment? Um, it doesn't necessarily surprise me. Um, I think that uh, in my particular case, as a former prosecutor from Illinois, you got to investigate before you prosecute. And so we just have to see where the evidence goes. I think that what she's trying to say is the evidence needs to go to a certain place before she's willing to take action. It may be different for different members, but um, I think that uh, the sentiment of the majority of the American people is probably let's uncover the evidence and then let's decide. Uh, but Congressman Khanna, she also, when she spoke to NBC, she compared this to uh, uh, the, the people wanting the impeachment of George W. Bush. There was no serious impeachment talk among Democrats in the House of Representatives about impeaching President George W. Bush. Why would she make a comparison to something that didn't really happen in the House of Representatives, whereas there's now very serious thought about impeachment in the House? Well, George Bush committed one of the biggest blunders in America with the war in Iraq, but I agree with you that there was never talk about impeachment other than the far left activist base. And I think Trump's uh, alleged crimes and his abuse of power are far more serious than anything uh, George W. Bush did or that, frankly, uh, any recent American president has done. Uh, that said, I think that Nancy Pelosi gave herself an out. She said if there is compelling uh, and overwhelming evidence, uh, then uh, she would consider it. And I agree with Roger. Let's uh, look at the evidence. Let's see the case. Let's see what the Mueller report says. Let's see what the Southern District of New York says, where Trump may be more vulnerable for financial fraud crimes. And let's call in experts like Lawrence Tribe and other constitutional law professors and have a conversation. It would be wrong to prejudge the issue either way. Uh, is, is it possible? Uh, I, mean, I know that the speaker, and I've heard this from members, I've heard this from major Democratic, Democratic Party donors for many, many months now, uh, that Speaker Pelosi absolutely doesn't want to move to impeachment. She wants to run against what she considers the most wounded Republican president in history. Uh, is it possible that this is a this is something she won't be able to control? Um, I, I'm not sure. Again, I think it really depends on how the evidence unfolds. We have so many investigations underway, as you know, Special Counsel Mueller. We have two or three committees of the House. Um, and um, we have to see where that goes, as well as what Southern District of New York and other places do. At the end of the day, I think that there's also, you know, an interesting question about how much uh, you know, energy and time you put into that process to either have him, you know, potentially uh, uh, not convicted in the Senate and then he proclaims his innocence or you end up with President Mike Pence. You know, I mean, this is a, an interesting set of uh, um, choices and I think that each member is going to have to make his or own her own decision on this. But uh, the, the, we have a president who is an unindicted co-conspirator in a federal case in Manhattan. We have never had that before uh, in, in the history of the presidency other than the Nixon administration. President Nixon ended up resigning under the threat of the impeachment process, which was already underway. Uh, as a precedent, would you be comfortable being in the, the majority in the House of Representatives that sets the precedent that it is perfectly okay for a president to be a participant in federal crimes, for which there's a guilty plea uh, in a district like uh, the Southern District of New York? Uh, have federal prosecutors say that the federal crimes were committed at the direction of the president of the United States? And, and, and have the House of Representatives take absolutely no action against a president under those circumstances? Well, Lawrence, it's worse than that. I mean, Michael Cohen testified that there were checks that the president yeah. was writing while he was president During from the, the Oval, yeah. Oval Office. And so I have no doubt that he was part of uh, a conspiracy, a criminal conspiracy. The question is, does this rise to the level of impeachment? Uh, and let's wait for the Southern District of New York. And let's get in people like Lawrence Tribe, uh, Akhil Lamar, Bruce Ackerman, see what the definition of high crimes is. 
And also, I don't think Pelosi is doing this for political reasons. I think she's genuinely pained. But, she's, but she said she is. Well, I mean, I she, she basically a... said she is. She said she won't do it without bipartisan support. That's a political calculation. It is not a moral calculation. It's not a legal calculation. Well, let me say this. I, I don't agree with her that there needs to be bipartisan support. But let me say that there's a difference between saying uh, what will give the Democrats an advantage in 2020. I think we're going to win. And her concern, which is one consideration about uh, not having this country fall apart and not having uh, armed uh, protests. Uh, that's something Lawrence Scribe wrote a whole book about, where he wrote that the case for impeachment may be justified, but there are other considerations and debate. I think Nancy Pelosi is just saying, let's have a deliberative process and a systematic process on this and not jump the gun. By the way, can I jump yep. in for a second? I absolutely disagree with anybody who says that there's not evidence of collusion or conspiracy in this particular case. Um, you know, we were just talking about Paul Manafort. Mm -hmm. Paul Manafort met with Konstantin Kalimnik, an individual who's connected to the Russian spy services, and he handed him private polling data. Kalimnik, in return, asked for sanctions relief for Russia. And you don't have to be a brilliant political strategist to know that private polling data is given to people in part to help them to target folks when they're running an influence campaign. That is textbook evidence of collusion. So these are the types of pieces of evidence that we need to kind of explore, investigate, and present the full story to the American people. I, I can't let either of you go without discussing what we saw in this presidential reversal on Medicare today. Uh, Donald Trump has basically designed uh, the Democratic Party ads against him, just showing him saying absolutely we'll never cut Medicare, and then he proposes the biggest Medicare cut in history today. Donald well, Trump told a falsehood? Yeah. I, mean, I well, can't believe it. And Lawrence, I think your uh, line, uh, which you is actually the most effective argument against the president, broken promises. Mm -hmm. Here's what he promised to do for you, for rural America, for people left behind. He promised to help invest in infrastructure. He's not doing that. He promised to make your health care better. He's not doing that. He's given tax breaks to New York and, frankly, to Silicon Valley companies. He hasn't done anything for the forgotten Americans. I actually think that line of argument is what people really care about. But the, specifically the Medicare cuts yeah. is, 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 to me, uh, it, it, this is him touching what was used to be called the third rail of American politics. He's touched the third rail. I think we should present this to the American people in 2020. He has made a choice. You know, someone said that uh, your budget reflects your values. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Trump has shown his values. You know, not only does he tell falsehoods on a regular basis, but he's basically cutting $2 trillion from health care, $500 billion of which come from Medicare, to in part pay for a wall. $9 billion for a wall, which people already said they don't want. This is just a rerun of a bad movie that ended bad, badly the first time. It's, gonna, it's, it's the same thing this, in the sequel. And it shouldn't surprise us because Trump, of course, believes that FDR was a socialist and Truman was a socialist. So at all their programs, of course, he rejects. Well, but he ran in support of Medicare. I mean, this kind of flip-flop is, is, is deadly. We have to hold them trail. accountable, Lawrence. Yeah. 2020. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there. We need to get both of you back to continue talking about the actual governing issues that you're dealing with every day. Congressman Rokana, Congressman